Hey, everybody. So obviously, it's been a pretty rough, uh, honestly, last six months, but especially rough May here the past 10, 11 days, uh, assuming you're a bull in cryptocurrency right now. We have a lot of different metrics that have been firing off some major anomalies that we haven't seen in quite some time, uh, as you would expect when we have such a plummet. Obviously, Bitcoin uh, dropped below 30K a couple times, sitting right at that level at the time of this recording. Uh, Ethereum very nearly scraped below 2K, and it's bouncing back to around 2100 at the time of this recording. But regardless, the big story uh, as of the last couple days has been Luna. Uh, it's now dropped about 98% since its all time high, uh, sitting right around $1 or just above, uh, depending on what exchange you're looking at. But Obviously, there was uh, some sort of attack on it. I'm not an expert on the fundamental reasoning, but I do know that the Luna Foundation, according to Reddit, which is, you know, has to be taken with a grain of salt, but Reddit seems to uh, generally agree that the, the Luna Foundation showed evidence of moving all of their Bitcoin uh, after the UST, the, the stablecoin pegged with it or, or associated with it that's supposed to always sit at a dollar. Uh, lost its peg and plummeted down to uh, as low as 40 cents. It's now sitting around 55 cents or so now. Um, and with the attack, uh, it, it seems like there probably isn't a recovery. I'm not going to speculate, and I'm definitely not going to give any invest, investment advice, uh, but it does appear as though the coin has uh, really shaken things up in the world of cryptocurrency. It's, of course, trending at this time. You can see that uh, it really, really spiked with over 4,000 mentions in the span of about three hours uh, earlier today. The uh, hype around it, or I should say just the general discussion rate around it, has started to come down a little bit. You can see down here at the bottom, this is the term Terra as opposed to its cash tag name Luna. Terra also refers to its stable coin. Uh, but yeah, this is obviously what's taking up a lot of the attention at this time. If we look, uh, we can actually see the blockchain transaction where there were uh, a total of 28,205 Bitcoin. I think this was one of a few different transactions. We see that, uh, you know, there was a, at one point, the, the address was a uh, over 70,000 Bitcoin large and, uh, it doesn't appear to have anything in it at this time. So pretty crazy stuff. Uh, it's been a whirlwind to say the least as far as a formerly top 10 market cap asset that is now sitting just outside the top 50. We can check on that really quick because I'd actually love to see where Luna stands in terms of its, um, its actual market cap rank. So if we go here, click on Luna, so it's showing 42, but I believe it's actually lower than that now. Um, let's see if I can find the screener here. We just reorganized our uh, pages a little bit. This should work. Ignore that. So, yeah, we can see here it's ranked... We have them all ranked by market cap, every asset out there. If we look at the top 100, Luna. There we go. So Luna is now sitting at 55th after formerly being as high as around 6th or 7th, I believe. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong there. But um, yeah, that's been taking up a large amount of the attention. Let's take a look at a few of the metrics here. I'm going to give it a quick refresh to get the resolution right. Uh, Ignore this tab restriction. This is, tends to happen uh, for pro accounts, and I'm on a pro account myself right now, but generally it'll resolve itself. Uh, first of all, the funding rate. So this is just FTX, but others are showing similar trends. FTX just shows it on an hourly basis, which is why I like to take a look. You can see that the funding rate um, over time you know, has a decent amount of volatility. Right, but you can see just what happened when the the plummet began. The funding rate started to go way short, way short, and really up until the shorts got absolutely out of hand, uh, sitting at 
negative 1.06%, which is almost never uh, a real number when it comes to, to funding rates, that's when we at least saw a short-term bounce and then the funding rate started to go back up and it resumed trickling down again. So we can see if we zoom in here, uh, you know, this was the very mild bounce, but I, I don't think it's worth really doing any price analysis to see if there's like a local bottom or anything of that sort, just because there are too many factors tied into uh, a real world event here related to the fundamental value of the coin itself. Um, but obviously it, it looks like it's on the verge of going down below a dollar. It actually was below a dollar earlier today already. So um, to, to all of the people who were holding Luna or are still, you know, we offer our condolences. It's certainly not a fun thing to see, especially for a top 10 asset that was as wildly popular. Um, and we're just going to have to see how this plays out with more news stories, I'm sure, continuing to come out in the following days. As for weighted sentiment, it's interesting that it isn't loading. Let me give it, oh, it's because I, I zoomed in on the uh, date too, too closely. So if I go to the last six months here, let's take a look at sentiment. So as you would expect, this is an all-time low. Uh, right now it's showing that we're at a standard deviation of negative seven below the norm, uh, which is crazy. Usually we see like no more than like negative three or positive three, depending on just how euphoric or how negative people are about the coin. But uh, this pretty much indicates that the sentiment toward Luna is universally negative. Uh, and I, I don't think that that's the kind of thing that you want to capitalize on, considering that this is uh, an event that may not be recoverable. Again, not investment advice. Um, one other thing, we can look at dominance as well and just see related to the asset, how many discussions are going on and it's only gaining traction like right now 16 and a half percent of all discussions related to cryptocurrency you know including bitcoin ethereum they're all 16 and a half percent are focused on luna right now uh, which is enormous considering its normal resting area was maybe like 0.25 to 0.5 percent so Obviously, I've, it's really the talk of the town and probably will remain that way until uh, Luna f begins to stop being volatile at the very least. All right, so that's a little update on the top topic. Uh, I also wanted to briefly look at UST uh, because this is the stable coin that is closely associated with it. And we can see what I'm talking about with the price which is normally always supposed to sit right around a dollar. You can see it sometimes fluctuate down to 0.996, but you know, mathematically nothing that would be worrisome. And then all of a sudden, you know, on May 9th, we really started to see Terra plummet, it got down to 69 cents. That was a huge scare. People thought it would recover back, but it never got back above 94 cents, plummeted all the way down. It got as low as 29 cents. Uh, and it did that, Looks like 30 cents here, and now it's starting to climb back up a little. But uh, you know, the verdict is out as if as to whether UST will ever uh, be pegged at one dollar again. So yeah, moving on to a few other updates that aren't related to uh, Terra UST or Luna, uh, we can look at the whale behavior for Bitcoin and Tether uh, large holders at this time. The pink line here is the amount of tether, uh, the amount of supply held by tether addresses that are holding between $100,000 up to $10 million. Uh, we find this tier to be kind of the key stakeholders who really fluctuate their holdings based on market conditions and what they believe is going to happen next. And they have a large control over what does happen next. So we can see that tether actually has been climbing. Uh, quite a bit in terms of these address holdings and their cumulative uh, amount that is in them. And up to about 34.6% here, it got to about 34.9%, but overall it doesn't appear to be uh, in serious jeopardy of, of people hemorrhaging Tether. So buying power is increasing. We can zoom out to the last year to give some context though. And the increase is still pretty slow compared to where we were. You know, we right about 
a week before the Bitcoin all-time high, there was about 41% of Tether held by these addresses. And now, you know, 34.5%, we're still quite a ways off from there. In the meantime, look at this gold line. This is the amount of Bitcoin held by uh, addresses holding between 100 to 10,000 coins. Uh, and they seem to be dropping continuously with today hitting another one year low. Uh, if we go back to 2020, we can see the last time we got this low was around November 2020. So we're looking at about a one and a half year low in terms of Bitcoin whales and how much they're holding. That's not a promising sign to say the least. Um, and until they show signs of accumulating once again, it's going to be a concern uh, that the top key stakeholders don't uh, don't seem to be showing a lot of confidence in the number one asset that really controls the rest of the markets. So uh, whale-wise, not looking great. Ethereum, on the other hand, it's looking a little better. Uh, for Ethereum, we try to look at... Uh, oops, that's interesting that it did that. Let me reset it really quick. So I'm going to load up whale transactions uh, of 100K or more and 1 million or more. And I'll switch to the daily on both. So quite clearly, we can see that today is a pretty landmark day in terms of the amount of $100,000 or more transactions going on. Uh, they're about to eclipse 15,000 transactions for the day. That would be the highest since January 21st. So we're looking at an almost four month high there. And then for 1 million or more, same thing, January 21st was the last time we saw uh, a number this high. So clearly, when whale transactions are spiking, it generally is a good sign. It doesn't necessarily guarantee anything. But when prices are, are plummeting and you see whale transactions firing off, could be a good sign of at least a short-term bottom. No, no guarantee, not investment advice. But you can see right here, this marked the bottom this marked the bottom. Even this very short-term bottom right here uh, was marked by the whale transactions. And now we're getting massive ones. And of course, this could be combined with, with whales who have had enough of Ethereum and are actually jumping out at the $2,000 level. But more often than not, this is a price reversal indicator. So this can be a promising thing, but it's going to depend on whether uh, you know, Bitcoin stays healthy enough because Ethereum can't just thrive on its own. It can certainly uh, have a, a better price dominance than Bitcoin. But if Bitcoin continues to drop below 30K, you know, might approach 25K or 20K, I don't have an opinion as to whether it does that or not. But if it does, it would be uh, pretty unprecedented for Ethereum to move in the opposite direction back to 3K, right? So you have to so weigh your risk there uh, when it comes to an indicator like this. But anyways, I just wanted to give a few updates in terms of how things look right now with Luna as the big story and, of course, Bitcoin and Tether whales and then even Ethereum whales and what's going on with the overall amount of transactions there. So hope you all enjoyed this. Hope you're all staying safe. Remember to uh, be safe with your investing right now. It's a very, very volatile time. And it's, it's very unpredictable as to what can happen next. But through these kinds of metrics, we can at least get some clarity and calculate our risk a little bit. So appreciate the time. And hopefully we see many of you on our This Week in Crypto call on Friday at 2 p.m. UTC. Talk to you all soon.